Good morning, UPBOptionMillionaires.com, March 23rd, 2015. It's a Monday, a start of a new week, and we have the U.S. dollar index continuing to roll over after the Federal Reserve came out and talked down the dollar a little bit. You see, we had a flash crash just after the close on Wednesday. We recovered a lot of those losses on the U.S. dollar, but here we are back to those lows that we flash crashed to, just like we saw the flash crash of May of 2010. Uh, S&P 500 futures, Dow Jones Industrial Average collapsed, uh, bounced to the, the point that we're only down 1%, but then ultimately in the weeks ahead, pulled back and ultimately broke through those prices. I think that's what's going to happen here with the U.S. dollar index. And I've been talking about it over the last couple of weeks as we've been continuing to see this parabolic rise in U.S. dollar, that this would be a problem. I said heading into it a week and a half prior to the Fed meeting of last week, that they would need to talk down the U.S. dollar, but still keeping the expectations of a rate rate hike coming at some point in the future, which they've been talking about since they announced ZERP back in December 2008, every year. Well, when we see things start to get better, we'll start to raise interest rates, yeah, keeping it simple there. And so we've been hearing the same thing, but interest rates have not been rise. Federal Reserve has kept 0% interest rate policy going for six and a half years. So the U.S. dollar starting to pull back. I was looking at support right here, bring a trend line across. About the 95.50 level, which is going to keep a bid, I believe, under stocks. Uh, some pieces coming out too. We have quantitative easing over in Europe, pushing all sorts of uh, money here into the U.S. But if you look, the S&P 500 futures here, beautiful trend line support, did not get down to it. Instead, decided to bounce a little earlier. We're getting back up to the all-time record highs here on the S&P 500 uh, futures here, and you can see the move up. We've had this morning. Uh, we have this kind of ritual every trading session it seems the overnight session when the european market opens for trade stock futures plummet and then come all the way back and look we've recovered almost all of those losses uh, we'll pull back a little bit here but looks like the market's opening in at least uh flat territory here uh, let's look at some individual names actually let's go to crude oil because crude oil has been rolling over hit new uh multi-year lows recently uh, you can see that the spike it had after the Fed minutes as the U.S. dollar got clobbered, uh, came back down. And then on Friday on the rally, but also lost uh, most of those games, gains into the end of the trading session and then the overnight session last night. And we're starting to bounce again. We're going to see another sharp spike up. Uh, just <laughs> interesting trading action in crude oil. Of course, um, you have people who think now it's going to bounce. And you have others who think it's going to continue to the downside, going to hit $15. So it's certainly an interesting trade here, crude oil, uh, back when it hit its record high, uh, not record high, but it's multi-year high back in the summer. Uh, a lot of people were calling for continuing up to 160, and it's done just the exact opposite. I mean, it's pretty much a crash. All right, let's move into individual names here so we can get into the market uh, session, which starts in about 20 minutes. Google, someone's asking me about Google. This morning, you can see 550 areas acted as support. We're not overbought yet. So I think we're going to get a move up to about 575 this week, but uh, keep an eye on this trend line. That's what we need to get above to get the record high stock prices here for Google. I was thinking we get up to that, possibly pull back. So we're going to get new all-time record highs in the next uh, month or two, or it's going to happen towards the end of the year. Apple, an analyst came out this morning, raised the target on the stock. You can see uh, these bullish flagging patterns, this is a nine-month chart, have ultimately resolved to the upside. And uh, I think this one is going to do exactly the same. It's just a matter of we're going to come back to support before we rock it up into the mid-130s. Uh, let's look at IWM, the small caps, which last week, uh, when we were getting weakness, IWM was not weakening as much. And even some trading sessions was trading higher when the SP 500 was trading lower. And you can see the move up, and I was talking about this move off 120. I said we had another 6 $7 to go. Once we get up to 123, I said 130, and here we are. At 120, almost 126 here, pre-market, uh, let me just look real quick and tell you where we are. The IWM is at 125.80, so it's down about 15 cents. And if you look, uh, I think we're going to see a continuation. We're just starting to get into overbought territory here. But again, we've done that in the past, uh, and it usually lasts uh, a couple weeks. So let's look at the, the NASDAQ. Uh, also, trading above a trend line here, I was expecting uh, this support to hold. We didn't even get down to it, and it looks like... Uh, we're mapping out new uh, highs here for QQQ, S&P 500 ETF, same kind of chart here. Uh, we're still 
not overbought yet. And uh, if you look back, each of the times we've been oversold, I brought this up recently, uh, we've had some pretty miraculous rallies here. And this is just another one uh, starting to go parabolic here. We'll see if we can continue up to that new paint high that we saw back in December and break that, which would be 213 on the SPY. Now uh, let's look at some individual names here. Solar City. Uh, you can see Solar City oversold here. Had a little bit of a bounce the last couple trading sessions. And I'm looking for a move back up to 55. Zillow at support. Look at this long-term trend line support about 101.87. Has moved its way off of it. Look how terribly uh, oversold it was uh, heading down to its recent lows under 105. Has been bouncing. And I'm looking for a move over 110. Uh, Triple D Barron's came out this weekend, had a negative article on some of the uh, trip, uh, 3D printing stocks. You know, I wouldn't say so much a negative article, but one that kind of just questions, you know, a justification of its price because you really can't determine where it's headed from here, which to me, uncertainty is what breeds uh, some of these short squeezes you see to the upside. You look, it was over 95 and we have so heavy short interest in DDD. But we're also at long-term trend line support. So we'll see if we get a bounce here. Uh, this morning, it's actually flat. I was expecting it to be lower. I guess nobody read Barron's this weekend. And let's see where we have DDD, Solar City. Let's look at Twitter because last week, Twitter was down at about the $46 level, uh, was breaking down and reverse course, got into some calls on Monday, $47 calls. Uh, Twitter went up to $49 last week. It was a really uh, strong week for Twitter. I'm seeing pieces out this morning, positive on uh, Twitter. And uh, you can look, Fill the Gap came up. I think it's going to be over 50 this week. Facebook as well. There was a little uh, analyst remark out just a little bit ago talking about how uh, it's really pulling in the ad revenue. So we'll see. Look at this move we had last week. 77.50, pretty much every trading session. Strong rally. Another consolidation phase here on Friday after up being up 2%. Uh, look for new all-time record highs on Facebook. Some of the names that have been really outperforming have been the dividend names. The stock, the corporations have been buying back their stock hand over fist. I know Lowe's announced a, a, a share buyback program. Uh, Home Depot has got an $18 billion two-year two share buyback program, has increased its dividend uh, seemingly every single earnings report, and it looks to be breaking out. You look at 120 as a possible level here. How about GoPro? Same thing last week. Got into the calls for a move, and if you look at this chart, it doesn't look like much of a move happened last week, but it did indeed happen. Uh, the 38 and $40 calls uh, worked out really nicely. You can see the move it's had, had down to these levels. This is the most heavily shorted stock out there by uh, percentage of, of short interest uh, compared to its float. And if you look, uh, I, I like the stock to move up over $50 in the short term, so I'll be trading that via out of the money options upb option millionaires.com i'll have a live webinar tomorrow going over the currency market uh right now we're in a, a a really interesting time as far as currencies are concerned with the u.s dollar ripping up to new record highs but this also means the euro has been plummeting uh versus the dollar the dollar's been gaining strength the euro although has had a sharp 500 pip reversal i'll be going over that tomorrow in a live webinar 11 a.m eastern standard time OptionMillionaires.com. I'll see you in the chat room. Everyone have a great Monday, a great trading session. Goodbye.